Hello guys, let's understand the delta epsilon definition of limit, which is the formal definition of limit. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's start with an example. We know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now suppose we have to manufacture a circular disk. Whose area should be 400 pi square centimeters within an error tolerance of plus minus 5 square centimeters? The question is, how close to 20 centimeters must we control the radius of the disk to achieve this? Let's solve this problem. What exactly does the term, error tolerance, mean in this context? Assume that this white shaded area depicts a disk with an area of 400 pi square centimeters. Plus 5 square centimeters, error tolerance means that the area can be increased by 5 square centimeters. Minus 5 square centimeters, error tolerance means that the area can be decreased by 5 square centimeters. This means the area of this disk should lie between these two limits. Divide all the terms by pi and take their square root. Finally, we determine the range of radii to calculate the area of a circle within the given range. We will now graph the circle's area and radius. We need the area of the circle to be in this range. So we must keep the radius of the circle in this range. This white curve depicts how the area of the circle changes as the radius of the circle changes. We require this output. As a result, the circle's radius should be 20 centimeters. And these are horizontally shaded areas that show the range of the area. The vertical shaded areas show the corresponding range of radii. For this allowed error, we use the Greek letter epsilon and delta for the difference x minus 20, which measures how close x must be to 20 in order for the error to be within that tolerance. Finally, we discovered that if we want the output to be within a certain error tolerance, we must control the input to be within a particular error tolerance. Mathematically, for every number epsilon, there exists delta, depending on epsilon. Secondly, when it comes to limits, the function will then be said to approach a value. That is, the function is close to that value but has not yet reached it exactly. As a result, there will be a gap. And, the f of x minus l exhibits the same gap. However, this gap should be confined in some way. And epsilon is that allowed tolerance f of x must remain within this tolerance. It follows that the magnitude of f of x minus l should always be less than the allowed tolerance, epsilon. We'll now apply these ideas to a more general function. Examine this function. This function's limit at point a is l. When we say that f of x has a limit l as x approaches a, we must ensure that the magnitude of f of x minus l is always less than the allowed tolerance. And how can we ensure that? By restricting x to be close enough to a. How close is close enough? It is sufficient that the distance, x minus a from x to a, be less than a positive number delta that depends on epsilon. So for every positive number epsilon, there exists a positive number delta, depending on epsilon. But x should not be equal to a. Why is this so? Because delta exists only if there is a gap between x and a. If x becomes equal to a, there will be no gap between them, implying that delta does not exist. It means the difference between x and a should not be zero. So for every positive number epsilon, there exists a positive number delta, depending on epsilon. That's it. That's all for today. If you like this video then please like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.